All right, well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our live webinar. Today is Wednesday, December 21st, and if you didn't know it, it's the first day of winter and probably the shortest day of the year as well. And from here, things can only get better as the days get longer again. It's going to be about 35 degrees, which is balmy in Minnesota. I'm Richard Schoen, coming to you from our offices in Eden Prairie, Minnesota. I'll be the moderator today for our webinar titled Setting Yourself Up for Automation in 2017. As 2016 comes to a close, you're probably starting to think about next year and what you can do to get more work done within your day. Since there's probably not a chance that a day will go longer to be or grow to be longer than 24 hours, you probably need to find a way to get more work done more efficiently. This webinar will provide an introduction to automation and some of the ways in which our customers are using automation to streamline their daily desktop and IT operations. Chances are you'll learn at least one new automation concept that you can bring to bear in 2017 to streamline your work. I'm Richard, as I mentioned, I'm Richard Schoen, Director of Document Management here at Health Systems. I'm part of the Technical Solutions Group, bringing topics like this to our customers and prospective customers. I have over 28 years of background on IBM I, Windows and Linux platforms, and managing and delivering forms and documents, and helping customers implement paperless process and other process automation. With me today is my friend Pat Cameron. Good morning, Pat. Why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your role here at Health Systems? All righty. Thanks, Richard. Like Richard said, my name is Pat Cameron. I, too, am a Director of Automation Technology here at Help Systems. Uh, I've been with Help Systems 17 years, so I've worked with a lot of our different automation products, uh, all of our different product lines. Um, and I am in the pre-sales uh, technical solutions group as well. So uh, I work with new customers. I do some training as well. Uh, help them get set up and uh, get those uh, automation tools running. So uh, in my previous life, I was an operations manager at a hospital here in Minnesota. Uh, so I feel your pain in that operations area and, uh, and love working with our products. So thanks, Richard. Uh, good to be here with you again uh, for another awesome. webinar. Yeah, Pat and I might, yeah, I guess you would call us seasoned veterans, right? <laughs> we kind of, yes, we are seasoned. That's a good way to put it. Thanks. <laughs> all, right, all right. So to begin our journey, we'll provide a short company overview of Help Systems and its history of providing automation to small and large businesses worldwide. Then we'll introduce you to some automation concepts that will help you along as you begin to learn about implementing automation in your companies. We'll provide a short introduction to some of the Help Systems automation solutions, and Pat will also provide a short technology demo for us today as well. And then we'll end with a few minutes of Q&A and a couple of polling questions. So feel free to enter your questions in the chat window as we go, and we'll address them towards the end of the webinar. Make sure to select all presenters so the questions are directed to both me and Pat. And then we'll also plan to complete our session in 30 to 40 minutes, so you have plenty of time to make your next important meeting. Also, today's event is being recorded, and you'll receive a link after the webinar to share with anyone in your organization who couldn't attend today's session. All right, Help Systems has been around since uh, 1982, so over 32 years providing system management, business intelligence, network and infrastructure monitoring, document management, and security and audit solutions for IBM I, Windows, Linux, and AIX platforms. We also offer process automation software for desktop or robotic process automation that allows users to streamline interacting with websites, Windows, and other desktop applications, and more to enter or extract data and save users lots of time. All right, as you look ahead to 2017, you're probably dreaming of those redundant work tasks that you can eliminate from your daily workload. That's what I dream about at night. So your team can better focus on servicing vendors, customers, and employees in the upcoming year. So here's a couple questions to ponder as you start thinking about automation for 2017. So where are your users spending lots of time? These would be areas where they spend the most time during the day doing tasks that could be potentially automated. What boring and repeatable tasks could you fully automate? What would your team do with the extra time gained through automation? As you ponder these questions and start looking within your own businesses, you'll start to discover automation opportunities where you can save your end users and IT departments lots of time and manual effort. Hopefully today we'll be stimulating your thought process by introducing you to a few areas where automation can help streamline your daily workloads. There are many different types of daily tasks where you might be able to maximize your existing resources through automation, running scheduled jobs and tasks. This is the concept of scheduling and automatically running executables and other application programs that need to be scheduled and coordinated across one or more servers throughout the day. Often most daily tasks that need to be run at regular intervals can be scheduled, freeing up the time to work on more important work. 
monitoring your network and server devices. Many organizations have a combination of on-premise and cloud-based servers, virtual machines and services running on Windows, Linux, AIX, IBM I, or maybe other devices such as machines fitted with IoT or what they call Internet of Things sensors monitoring the shop floor and other mechanical processes. All of these servers have to be up and running 24 by 7 and monitored to make sure work keeps flowing. What about your phone systems, your network switches and routers? These are all critical computer-driven devices as well. Being in the know on whether all your machines and networking equipment is functional is a very important thing. Interacting with websites and Windows applications. In many cases, we work with business departments who are trying to automate users' daily work, such as entering data into multiple applications, copying and pasting data between applications in Excel, and others. So these are all good candidates for desktop automation. Generating reports. Oftentimes, users are logging into applications and running or generating their own reports via application system menus because their software lacks the ability to schedule automations to run reports and other processes and then download, archive, and distribute those resulting reports. Extracting or importing data to Excel. Often users receive Excel files or CF CSV files, and, or they might need to generate files for sending to vendors and customers. Using automation capabilities to read and write these files and import or export data is a huge time saver. Reading and writing to databases, when data needs to be quickly extracted from a database or inserted into a database, database automation actions can be very important. And then uh, processing incoming email messages, perhaps. Often customers receive emails that might contain information or attachments to be processed. Accounts Payable is a good example of receiving and processing file attachments automatically. So where are your users spending a lot of time? As you start looking within your business, you'll start to discover automation opportunities where you can save your end users and IT departments lots of time. But one question you can ask to spur this discussion is, where do you spend the most time today doing things manually? You'll probably be amazed at the number of automation opportunities your IT and business departments will discover. All right, so uh, since we're at this spot, I'm going to open a poll, and, and we'll leave this open until the end, and we'll cover it during the Q&A section. But uh, please answer if you don't mind, and we'll share the results with everyone so we can get an idea of what folks are doing for automation in 2017, or at least what areas you're thinking about, see if you're all on the same page. So let's take a moment to familiarize you with a few terms I hear commonly that describe automation. So you hear robotic process automation, that's kind of the new buzzword that's out there. Business process automation, scheduled tasks and scheduled jobs, swivel chair automation. Pat just heard that one for the first time last week, I think, and that's the idea of going back and forth in your chair between two different applications. Edge process, that's my I've favorite I've seen term. that in action as well. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I do that myself, I think, in some cases. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so digital assistant is another term, uh, network and process monitoring. So. These are all kind of common terms used to describe the automation of daily work usually done by end users and IT departments. So which departments are typically candidate, likely candidates for automation? So there's typically two main areas in a business where automation software is typically used to implement automated processes. We have our IT departments. So in IT departments, automation can be used to schedule and run back office schedule jobs, business processes and workflows. These are IT processes normally done during the day or maybe run after hours to keep the business operational. Might also include report generation and email automation, database updates, network and service monitoring, and more. Automation software can also be used to interact with and automate many development operation processes. The new term for this is commonly called DevOps. So if you have that going on, chances are we can help you automate some of that. Uh, end user departments. So in end user departments, uh, automation is often used to automate the time consuming data entry process and data extraction process is normally done by users performing data entry into Windows or web applications or by copying and pasting data between applications. Eliminating or reducing data entry or entering the same data into multiple systems is a key benefit to automation that can quickly justify an automation software implementation. Who should typically set up and create automation processes? In an end user department, it might include someone with business analysis or macro building skills. These people are usually familiar with analyzing and implementing new processes. In IT areas, the creators of automation processes can include operations, network administrators, as well as developers if needed. They're always the standby. Uh, so, so let's take a quick look. I always like to talk about this. Um, this is a, the concept of requirements gathering for a new process that you might be thinking about automating. 
So this general requirements gathering process can be used for any workflow you want to automate. I always ask people to create a simple bullet list or an outline of the steps for a desired automation task. In other words, what does the human do today? Based on those assumptions and talking it through, you have to determine can a chosen task be systemized for automation? So here's some examples. Can task inputs be driven from an email message or a file or a database? What kind of decisions have to be made in the task, and does the task need manual input most or all of the time, or can it be automated? Is the process consistent, predictable, and repeatable every time? If so, then chances are the process can be automated, whether it's a scheduled job, an email task, a browser interaction task, a file transfer, or some other automated process, such as network and system monitoring. So gathering business requirements not only helps your team determine the manual steps that need to be automated, but you can decide whether your internal team members have the skills to build automation tasks, or whether it's more efficient to utilize an outside service team to implement automation processes for you. Health systems automation solutions are flexible enough to allow your team to do as little or much implementation as desired. So there's plenty of benefits to workload automation. The number one benefit is providing more time to service customers and vendors and keep them happy. Without happy customers, we wouldn't be in business, and without happy vendors, we can't purchase the products or materials needed to keep our customers happy. It's a vicious cycle. Data entry accuracy and entering data into one or more systems without rekeying or copying and pasting information is another primary driver and benefit of automation as well. Lowering stress and fatigue and reducing job burnout and repetitive injuries such as carpal tunnel is also very important. I've talked to customers where they've had to rotate employees between doing mundane data entry work and more meaningful work throughout the day to prevent burnout and turnover of skilled employees. There are still some people out there who love heads down data entry, but in today's world, keeping our skilled employees productive, happy, and appropriately engaged is paramount to retaining them. And finally, being able to get more work done with our existing staff is a good thing and allows a team to grow at the same level of staff. Often the additional data entry tasks end up being an added burden to already busy knowledge workers' daily workloads. By automating those data entry workloads, staff can be stay focused on the important work of servicing vendors and customers. Good stuff to think about. All right, so let's take a look at an example of something knowledge workers do throughout the day that some of you might identify with. I call this sample work pattern the received report processing pattern. This is a mind-numbing manual scenario where a report or work is received in a CSV or text file or an Excel spreadsheet or a PDF, and all the items have to be reviewed and processed manually. The user opens the report, they print it, or they start working through the data line by line, and hopefully they have at least two monitors to work with their data. So for each line entry, they perform some data entry or other work, possibly in another system, or maybe data gets copied and pasted to a new spreadsheet or, or a, a, a report. When the work has been completed for the list, the original report and any, any new documents might get saved for archival and audit purposes. And then maybe finally the results get uploaded to another system for back-end processing. So the mouse was invented to be helpful for interacting with the desktop, but manually copying and pasting lots of data between applications isn't the way to do daily important work unless there's no other way. And fortunately there is through automation. So since this report processing task is driven by a consistent, repeatable list of information, it's a good candidate for robotic process automation and eliminating all the manual steps. Now when the report gets received, the user simply saves the report to an input folder for automated processing, or if the report comes in an email, an email box process monitor can grab the report and save it to the input folder to get automatically processed, which means even the first step could be automated. We're still showing the first manual step here because many people like to still manually receive and save the files during initial rollout of a new process until the process has been fully tested and trusted. Then the first step can be checked off as well. So assuming the review and data steps we eliminated were repeatable, the new process simply runs in the background via a robotic process agent, or a robot as we call them, and then the results are automatically entered or updated into the back-end systems. The files are archived and audit trails are created during the process to document what work just got completed. And if process notifications were required, the process can send out notification and completion emails, update database information, or other systems to audit the work that was completed. This is a great way to improve the daily redundant work processes done across various departments throughout the business, and chances are you'll see variations of this use case in your organizations. So let's talk about some of the areas within the business where help systems automation technology can streamline your daily workloads. So your automation needs might focus on three general areas within the business, individuals and teams and their associated work productivity, business applications and maximizing related return on investment by automating daily scheduled work and reporting processes, and systems and infrastructure, which focuses on monitoring the various back office applications and making sure systems are running efficiently. 
let's take a little more in-depth look at each one of these. So for individual productivity, the tasks that need to be automated generally focus on work done by the knowledge workers in various departments. These individuals are normally the people who perform the daily repetitive tasks such as file management, report generation, and copying and pasting of data as we've already talked about. Team productivity can be improved by allowing small, medium, or large groups of workers to process high volumes of transactions by queuing up work or allowing call center agents to eliminate steps when working through a transaction. The trick here is to identify the typical bottlenecks for their processes. Is, is it the time it takes to look up a customer information when a call comes in? Is it the time it takes to query a fulfillment system for an order status? Or maybe reading or updating information into a CRM or service case ticket system? Each team scenario will be slightly different, but identifying areas of time impact with automation is important. We're always happy to talk with you about any of your individual and team workflow productivity needs and how we can help automate tedious daily tasks. Daily scheduling of work that needs to happen throughout the day is important. In the morning, maybe a file transfer process needs to occur at 6 a.m. and then the shop floor packets are generated. At lunchtime, maybe orders and invoices might get generated and printed and mailed, maybe emailed. Then at the end of the day, nightly processes run to summarize daily sales into a data warehouse using an ETL system. Scheduling and timing of these jobs and monitoring for success or failure of these daily processes is very important and automation can help. Workflow and job scheduling processes need to have the right level of automation checks and balances for your daily processes and the help systems team is here to help you with that. The keyword is help. Behind the scenes in any shop are the various IT and business systems that need to be up and running to make things happen. Mainframes, IBM I, Windows, Linux, AIX are, are the lifeblood of our IT data centers as well as our cloud servers in today's world. Uh, by monitoring these servers as well as your network switches and your security appliances and your phone systems and other devices automatically 24 by 7, you can get notified immediately if something's not right or if there's a network traffic bottleneck. We're here every day to talk about any of your system monitoring needs and how you can gain control of your ever-growing network. As you start automating your workflows and your workforce and their key processes, where you're at on the automation continuum will change as your business and automation needs mature. As you start looking at automation and monitoring solutions, don't get stuck with an automation platform only focused on a single type of automation. You want to work with a flexible company such as Help Systems who can provide software for meeting the individual and team automation needs for each department, can help with enterprise job scheduling needs as your job-based processes become more complex, and can monitor your network and processes on-premise and in the cloud to keep all your business processes and your DevOps processes running smoothly and efficiently while keeping your team in the loop automatically on any failures that occur. So let's do a quick introduction to the health system's automation capabilities. The automation or the automate business process platform is used to automate the creation, running, and management of Windows process automation tasks and workflows without writing code. Task developers use our drag and drop actions to build managed tasks, which can run on a scheduled basis or in response to trigger events. Tasks and workflows can also be run on demand, and there's over 600 predefined actions and activities for most common robotic process automation use cases. The items on this page represent most of the commonly used operations of our automation platform to automate your daily work, from file transfer to file manipulation, reading and writing databases, Excel, CSV, XML, and text files. Our software can automatically process just about any data source. We also allow you to automate monitoring mailboxes for inbound mail and automatically sending outbound messages. SharePoint and user onboarding and provisioning automation are also available as part of our more than 600 automation activities. Automating user interface interactions with Windows, web, and Java apps is a popular way to integrate to existing applications if they don't have an API available to interface with. This is commonly referred to as robotic process automation. In these scenarios, workflows are built to log into the application, navigate the user interface, and maybe enter or extract some data, or run jobs such as invoice or report generation. I think I have at least one of those calls every day. And then Automate also supports integrating outside technologies when you need to work with more than our built-in automation actions. As far as job and workflow scheduling goes, we support setting up simple or complex scheduling for Windows, Linux, AIX, Unix, and IBM I system jobs. Work can be coordinated across multiple interconnected robots or agents so that systems can stay in sync no matter which server they run on. So you've got jobs running across multiple servers. 
And then for network and device monitoring, we provide a living view of your network. From network server and device status to monitoring traffic flow, we integrate it all to a visual dashboard so your data center team can immediately see if all servers are up and running and when something goes offline. So being able to react immediately to outages is important to keeping your various systems up and running all the time. All right, Pat, up to you. Am I on? Switch, I'm going to switch it over to you. Let's see here. All Thank right. You. It's always fun doing that in WebEx here. There we go, make you presenter. All right, so Pat's going to do a little live demoing for us now. Over to you, Pat. All right. So can you see my screen? Uh, not quite yet. Yeah, there it comes. Right. We're good. Oh. There we go. All right, great. So I have got a couple of examples of uh, some of those tasks that you can uh, that you can automate. A couple individual ones, and then a workflow that kind of coordinates across multiple applications. Um, so I'll kind of show you how those are put together. Um, like Richard said, who builds these tasks? And typically, it's maybe a power user. Uh, sometimes a developer, it doesn't need to be because you don't have to do any coding. Uh, over here on the left side of the screen, this is an automate task that I've got built. And what this does is it um, runs a, uh, logs into a, a DB2, an IBMI system, runs a, some SQL statements, and then um, updates a spreadsheet and emails that report off to someone. Um, and so what you can do over here on the left-hand side of the screen, these are all drag and drop, so I just bring this action um, over to the work area, shows me a template, uh, pick from a list of drop-down menu options, um, and I can schedule that task to run then when it needs to. Um, so here you can see I'm cr we're creating a couple of variables, we're opening a CSV file, or creating a CSV file, uh, establishing that connection uh, to the SQL server, uh, and then executing a SQL statement, and then writing those results out to a data set. Data set's kind of a local table uh, within the task, and then we write those out to a spreadsheet. So when this runs, and like Richard said, these tasks might be based on time, or they might be based on some other event, uh, email trigger, uh, some other uh, database trigger, et cetera. There's my um, spreadsheet, uh, so it downloaded all of that information from that database, created the spreadsheet, and I think if I've got an email over here, here's that customer list. So all of that done is done without any kind of intervention from, uh, from a user. So that's a good task. Anything with Excel, I think, is uh, we've got a lot of customers that use that. Absolutely. Another task that I have, this one goes out to a website. So again, we're creating a spreadsheet, and we do that in a lot of our demos, and then logging into Google. Um, so we're going to Google Finance, and we're going to pull some, so based on the information in the spreadsheet that I've got, we're going to pull down the uh, stock information for a couple of different companies. So what Automate can do is uh, create that spreadsheet to get ready, go ahead and log in to, the, uh, to Google, um, and then it will uh, take the text from my, um, from my spreadsheet, plug it into the screen, and then pull back the results and update that spreadsheet. Um, so again, none of that needs to be done with any kind of manual intervention. Down here, um, over here where our actions are all stored, we've got our web browser actions that allow you to open the URL, navigate to a certain uh, object on the page, um, and then update that information. And again, I think I'm updating the spreadsheet down here, writing that information out to the spreadsheet, and emailing it off to me. Closing the browser session, closing the worksheet, and then emailing. So when this runs, we're going to go ahead and create an Excel spreadsheet that's got the symbols of the companies that I want to find. Apple, somebody else in Google, or Alphabet. Uh, so it's logging into that website, entering information in the search for um, Apple, and then extracting the information on this page, uh, feeding that into my, uh, into my spreadsheet. Uh, Western Digital is the other one. And then Google or Alphabet, whatever you want to call it, is the next one. So if you need to periodically, you know, go to a website for any type of information, 
um, we can automate those types of tasks for you as well. So my task completed, and now if I look at my email again, here's my stock report. And here's the updated price information. And then the last task that I want to show you um, is a little bit more complicated. So what we have here is a workflow that has a number of different steps in it. So these are um, individual tasks or workflows. And what we're doing with this one is we are um, adding users to our Active Directory. So we're onboarding new employees and um, uh, enrolling them in various um, applications that we need. So a workflow is put together. I've got a config file, which actually what I have here is another spreadsheet. And in this spreadsheet, I've got my employee names. I've got the department. I think I've got some other information over here. Uh, the username, um, a, um, a temporary password, etc., cetera, uh, and what the email address will be. So that's my input file. So this workflow is going to read that input file, uh, process that data, and then it's going to loop through that data and as many, as many employees that are in there, as many rows that are in that spreadsheet, and then it's going to trigger the proper um, uh, workflow over on this other end. So this is my, here's what my Active Directory looks like now. You can see we've got a few people in there. I'm going to go ahead and run this. And you can see the little blue arrows. It's going to trigger one step. As soon as one step completes, it's going to go to the next. So it's reading in the config file and creating a data set. You might see some business down here in the right-hand corner as this task runs. Um, Automate is always going to monitor to make sure that each of those steps is successful before it goes on to the next one. Notify someone if there's a problem. Uh, and now it's running the task that's going to actually create the Active Directory entry for me. Um, so here it's uh, entering that information, and if I go ahead and update this, you can see I've been added as a user in Active Directory, and it's just going to continue to go through that loop. So it finished this loop to add the, to AD, and if I go back to this other one, now it's going through this loop and reading that spreadsheet, triggering the user provisioning as well and adding another user, so Mickey's in there now. So as you can see, those, uh, those types of IT tasks, so in, in addition to individual tasks, data entry type tasks, um, your IT system administrators um, can automate a lot of the tasks that they're doing now. They might be writing PowerShell scripts to do that, um, but you can free them up from that type of uh, um, uh, activity and um, automate all of that for them. So those kind of day-to-day -day things that get rather mundane, we can uh, eliminate those with uh, our automation tools. All righty, I think that's all I have to show you now. Yeah, yeah, and Pat, one thing to note while you have that screen up though too, where it says P camera and 0215, that's actually the mm -hmm. server that it's running on too. So you can actually specify at any step in those workflows that they run on a particular server. So it's that simple. Exactly. Yes, I have a drop-down list of available servers I can run these on. Yeah, so and you can set some to... defaults up. Yeah, it's very easy to change that up. Absolutely. Yep. Awesome, Pat. Thanks. You're welcome. All right. So let me switch back over, and then we'll do a little Q&A. Pat's going to take the questions. I'll attempt to answer them, so you guys can try and stump me with automation questions if you like. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I love stumping Richard. I know it's hard, but... <laughs> yes, it, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It is hard. It is hard. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Okay, I've got one here. Um, oh, can Automate interact with Linux? Uh, it looks oh. like it's running on a Windows server here. Can we interact yep. with Linux? Yeah, both our Automate and our Skybot scheduling software run on Linux, so we have a few different ways to interact with Linux. Software can connect directly to a database or web service running on a Linux server, or if shell commands or file transfers need to be done directly on the Linux server, we can connect via the Telnet SSH client to run local commands on the Linux server as well, wait for responses, and then check, check for success or failure. 
Also, if a customer uses our central BPA server solution, which Pat was just showing, or our SkyBot software, uh, there's a Java process agent that can run natively on a Linux server to run local processes as well. So there's many ways to interact with local or cloud-based Linux or servers. Good question. All right, awesome. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. Okay, one more. Is it is it difficult to create those workflows and automate? Do you need to know computer programming in order to create it? Yeah, I think we talked about it a little bit earlier. You're probably not going to turn this over typically to end users, so it's so it's not difficult to create workflows with automate, and you don't need to be a computer programmer. However, we don't usually recommend turning it over to the end users, right? Uh, workflows are usually created by business analysts or power users like we talked about earlier in a department such as maybe someone who's created Excel macros. They understand business processes, they've used Visio, and they've defined those types of processes before. And of course, IT team members such as administrators and developers can also build their own automation processes for IT-related automation functions. So every business will be a little bit differently. All right. You know, you, you don't have to be a programmer, certainly, but you've got to be logical. And to me, I guess the important thing is you've got to know what your process is. So there are some simple, you know, individual tasks that uh, users could create, certainly. Um, but typically it's a, a little more complicated than that. Yep. All right. Question about um, uh, Oracle Solaris is a supported agent uh, and a server. And, and uh, now Solaris as an agent um, is supported in the SkyBot scheduling product. Yeah, and I think on the BPA server there with our Java process agent it is as well, as long as they have a Java virtual machine running there. All right. Uh, and then a question from Tim. Uh, running a command line program, can you pass variables into the command line? Absolutely you can. Yep. Most definitely. On all platforms. Yep. Any of, any of the products. And then uh, what kind of security does Automate have? So Automate can interact with your existing security mechanisms on Active Directory, like Pat showed, even onboarding processes, your IBMI and your other authentication mechanisms. So, so really you can make sure processes are being accessed and run securely on every one of the servers, depending on what its login needs require. The software also has the ability to store secure database connection strings that can be shared securely across multiple automation workflows as well. Excellent. Oh, and Tim wants to know about auditing. Yes, all of our automation products audit all the changes to any of the objects that are created, and you can report on that, have those, <coughs> excuse me, audit reports sent directly to your auditors. So uh, that information is easily and readily available. Good questions. I was looking at a couple of these other ones we have here. So can it connect to System Center Service Manager? Uh, since I've not used System mm -hmm. Server Center Manager, <laughs> that's a big acronym. <laughs> Chan chances are if it's got a user interface, an API, or a web service, or a database, we, we can certainly connect to it. So we'll have someone follow up with you, and we can do a technical session probably in a review of what you're doing there. Unless I just got some questions earlier today from uh, one of our reps over in the UK that was wondering about integration with SNMP. So if that service provider is maybe opening tickets or um, used for monitoring, both, you know, all of our automation products can send SNMP traps up uh, to that software to maybe open up a ticket for you. Yep, this, yep, this one says uh, we currently have automate but not BPA. Uh, what does VPA allow us to do that we can't do is just automate? I think probably for the scope of today's session, we'll follow up with you offline on that. But think of automate as a standalone individual server version of automation, and BPA server is the ability to, to have a centralized scheduling server with one or more agents, as Pat was showing with her onboarding workflow. But we'll have someone follow up. We can do a more in-depth discussion with you. But it's more mm -hmm. of an IT-centered version. Right, whereas automate is more individual. Tim wants to know if there's a log of all the automate tasks, dates and times when they uh, are run. Yes, we keep history on all of those tasks. Start and end time, success or failure. Yep, yeah, and it's also important to note on that too is that you can do your own custom logs as well too. I know sometimes we get customers that want to do their own custom logging. So our built-in logging or custom logging is supported. Lots of flexibility. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to read or write information to a JSON file other than looping through it line by line? 
Yeah, absolutely. We've got ways of both reading and writing the JSON files. I know uh, I've done some samples with Automate that I'm happy to share with you as, as that's on one of our online, online, if I could talk, online sample sites. But we're also adding actions, I know, into the Automate product in version 11. Right, specifically for JSON type files. Yep. This one says, I, I think I read some information about using Office 365. Do you have some examples of what Automate can do with Office 365? <clears throat> sure. So if you're using Office 365 email, we have the ability to interact directly with mailboxes and grab email messages and process them and move them to a saved mailbox. Or if you're interacting, and, and then same thing with Outbound, we can send directly through Office 365 and Exchange, of course. And then we can also integrate to SharePoint Online as well. So, and then there's a lot of different PowerShell commands uh, for Office 365, such as provisioning users and things like that that you might need to accomplish. So we're, we're happy to talk more offline on that one. This one says, cool. is, there, is there support for document management functions? Well, you happen to hit my sweet spot on that yeah, question. right. Too. Because I come from a document management background. Did you background. set this well, question up, Richard? <laughs> yeah, actually I didn't, but thanks for staging that one. Uh, so <laughs> as it so happens, Help Systems has a document management product called WebDocs. And so we can actually use Automate to import into our document management system or other document management systems such as OnBase and Content Manager and those sorts of applications as well. So absolutely, it's not part of, direct part of our, our uh, Automate product, but you can add on our whole, we've got a whole process or paperless process management division that covers document management. So we're happy to reach out and talk to you more about that and advanced form processing and all that sort of stuff. And then I have one more, Pat, and I think then okay. we we'll probably need to wrap wrap things Alrighty. up. Alrighty. So, uh, yeah, I so don't have any says, on this end. Yeah, this one says, we use your robot software for IBM I. Can Automate Sweet. work with robot? So, it so can. Automate has been integrated both to our SkyBot and our robot Schedule Enterprise products, so all three of those scheduling environments can work together. We have some customers that have all three of our scheduling products and some that have one or two, but they can all run jobs across platforms, which is pretty nice. All right, so let's do a quick review on the polling results here, and then we'll wrap things up. Uh, so let's see what we got here. So what type of process automation tasks do you plan to do? So in 2017, so 50% of you data extraction to Excel, I'm not surprised by that. I need to import and process data from Excel, about 44% of you. Uh, FTP file automation, 56%. I need to transfer data between databases, 13%. Probably have some data warehousing projects going on there, perhaps. Automating inbound email processing, 6%. That's pretty low, but for those of you thinking about that, you know, uh, inbound email is definitely an easy way to implement inbound processes and kick those off automatically. So make sure to rethink that as you're starting to think about automation. Automated interaction with websites, 19%. Scheduling daily jobs, 63%. Monitoring network servers, 44% of you, and 6% of you are here just to learn. So hopefully you learned at least one good new thing that you can use in 2017. What type of user are you? No end users. Nobody wants to admit to being an end user on this call today. <laughs> IT users, admins, developers are 63%. <laughs> business analysts are 6%. Power users, 6%. Uh, business or department manager, 6%. And then IT management was 25%. And no others today, so that's good. We had, we had nobody that's straight outside the fold. Uh, do you or will you build your own or implement? I have a spelling error there. Your own automation nice. test. Yeah, yeah. 81% uh, said yes, 6% said no. And then do you already use help systems automation software products? So 63% of you, thank you. We, we appreciate you being customers. And 25% not yet. So hopefully we'll get a chance to earn your business in 2016 or 2017 as we work with you. Uh, all right, so we're in the home stretch here. So thanks for attending our webinar today. We hope you learned some interesting information and have some ideas about how your organization might be able to streamline and provide tangible transformation through automation in 2017 and beyond. In case we've piqued your interest, we'd like to take a minute to tell you about special offer for attendees. Right now we're offering a free end of year 30 minute automation review. What is a 30 minute automation review? The review is a streamlined version of our full automation audit. So during the 30 minute call, one of our automation experts Maybe me, maybe Pat, maybe one of our others will walk through 
your entire, or not your entire, but your IT environment and your automation setup, what applications you might be running, automation project plans for the next six to 18 months and how our stuff might landscape into that, uh, any existing pain points, future automation goals, and then automation capabilities you may not already be using in your help systems automation software if you're an existing customer. So the automation audit is designed to help businesses maximize ROI by using automation best practices and helping you discover additional automation opportunities you may not have thought of. This is ideal for prospective new and seasoned users to take greater advantage of their workflow automation software. Whew, that was a muffle. Uh, follow the, <laughs> make sure you follow the registration link above to sign up today. We anticipate slots filling up quickly. Uh, if you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out to our sales team, me or Pat, and we'll be happy to address your questions and input or provide a more in-depth technical demo if you would like to see our automation technology in action. Uh, and, and I saw a couple questions come in. You will receive a link to this recording so you can share the webinar with those in your company who could not attend today's session. We look forward to working with your teams in the upcoming year to continue your automation success. Again, thanks for attending today's webinar. Have a great holiday season, and we'll see you in 2017. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one.